Derek, Mike said that he wants to kind of get back to, you know, uh, the basics in a way for what this offense can do. For you, how, what, how, what does that mean? Uh, running the ball differently? But what, what's the, what needs to change, I guess? We all have the same mindset. Getting back to the basics, doing what we do, doing what we know how to do, and go out there and execute it. Back to the basics this past week, fundamentals, working on small things and improving. Did you see that try to transfer into the game, even though it wasn't the outcome you wanted? What specifically do you want to work on fundamentally that would be different from what you did last week? I mean, I think we should, uh, we did it in that first drive, but we didn't sustain it throughout the game and, you know, end up losing. That's what happens. But um, I think you just, you know, just keep working on it, um, keep heavy, heavy emphasis on it when you're out here. Um, on the practice field, meeting room, and you know, continue to work on it until Sunday comes. What do you think you guys have done differently maybe to lead to those struggles where the first drive seems to be going to plan a lot of the time when it's scripted? You guys kind of get off script and have had some trouble sustaining drives uh, in these first two games. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, that, that first drive, you know, we were into it, uh, moving the ball and um, playing how we wanted to play and, you know, got in the end zone, and I don't think, you know, the rest of the game, we weren't able to sustain that. And I think that's just the main focus, is getting the drive, make big plays, um, get conversions, and then go out there and, uh, and score points. And then we, we know if we do that, we give ourselves a good chance. How would you describe the shortcomings in the rushing attack? Where is it like, is it something that you guys aren't doing, or is it something that opposing teams are doing to, to stop it or slow it down? No, it takes all 11. We got to be better. Um, my part, I got to do my part and be better. And um, it takes all 11. So. Just focusing on it, being better at it, and working it out here. And come Sunday, make it all come together. How do you and the team lean, lean on the, the success of the past rather than kind of referencing the, the failures of the last two weeks? Just a little adversity. I mean, the sky's not falling. And we, we know we'll be fine. You know, just, just stay with it. Um, you know, we, we know we got the men in this building that'll get, that'll, that'll get it done. You know, it takes a lot of uh, hard work and improving, and um, like I said, getting back to the basics. Talking it takes all 11 guys to make it happen. You just said that. But are guys sometimes, when things don't go well, maybe try, guilty of trying to do too much and maybe just not not cleaning up their own details and, and trying to do too much and help too much? No, it's not an individual sport. Um, it's all of us. And, um, you know, some guys don't have bad plays. That's a, a part of the game. But as long as you don't see that mindset want to improve and, you know, still work as hard as they can, that's all you can hope for. It's not always going to be perfect. What has been kind of the mood mindset this week and what's it going to take to win on Sunday? Um, I think Coach put it ber put it perfect. Um, getting back to doing what we do, um, getting back to, you know, what, what we do to, you know, make, make this team have success um, on all three phases. And that's just focusing on that. Um, hold each other accountable is, is, is what I've been saying. But we, we know it starts out here, um, and that's a big focus on just letting it carry into Sunday. What you do out here is definitely going to carry to Sunday, and that's the main focus. Have you ever been 0-2 at any level of football, and, and how uncomfortable a feeling is it, I guess? Uh, I've been 0-2 uh, back in high school. I mean, it's never a good feeling when, you, when, when you're 0-2. You, know, you definitely want to win. That's why you play this game. But like I said, the sky's not falling. Um, we're still focused. You know, it's early as on the week two, early in the season, it's a long season. So, you know, we just continue to work and working to improve every day. How much do you talk with the offensive line? Do you have meetings with them? I can't remember if you, you guys were having those regularly in the past. Well, talk about what? Just what you're seeing, what they're doing. Well, I think I think we all know what we need to do. We know it's not hasn't been our standard and the success we had in the past, and we got to be better. I think we all know that we need to have a sense of urgency, and that's what we all focus on. Derek, you've always been critical of your performance, always looking for ways to improve. Was it a little harder to flip that switch coming off that Monday night game and trying to shake that and move on? Oh no, it, it made it more more easier. Um, you know, just get to get it going. I think when things like that happen, I think the since the urgency rises, and we, you know, you get a level that you just want to get it going at at some point, and that's my main focus: is come out here and work hard, and work hard every day until Sunday comes. Have you seen that in your teammates as well? Maybe you feeling that this team needed a little bit of a wake up call, and Monday night might have been that for everybody to to take it up a notch. Yeah, I mean, we got in this got in this building on this team definitely motivated. And it's a grown man business, so our approach is always the same. Just come out here and get better and 
You're ready for Sunday. Derek, what do you see from this Raiders defense and also a familiar face with Jayon Brown, who you guys were teammates for a while? Oh, yeah, they do uh, a lot of different things. Um, they switch up a lot, give you a lot of different fronts. Um, and, you know, you might have something on one series and a whole another defense on another series. So you got to just watch a lot of film on these guys. Um, happy to see Jay on over there uh, playing some ball. But, you know, we got to prepare for them because they do so many different things. So. That's right. All right, who's going to start out with the punt return question today? Yeah, well, that's, that's it. There we go. Come on. What's, <laughs> where, where are you in the process of figuring out who's is it going to still be Kyle, or, or where are you in the process? Yeah, I mean, we're still in the, in the process of going through who's going to be back there. Obviously, today's going to be a big day, but uh, we got to get back to the fundamentals. I got to do a better job coaching it. Uh, just letting those guys understand versus a right-footed punter, if that ball starts to turn over, you know, that ball is going to start drifting to the left. If it doesn't, that ball is going to be short and to the right. Um, just getting back to the basic fundamentals of getting square up to the ball, um, having our elbows in and watching it through. So we're going to focus on that today and uh, with all the guys, whether it's KP, whether it's Imani Hooker, um, Robert Woods, or anyone else back there, we're going to really focus on that fundamental today. Shoulder injury, does shoulder injury have any impact whatsoever on his ability to raise his hands and catch the ball properly? Uh, you know, obviously we didn't feel like that going into it. Um, you know, Kyle's a tough kid, and, and uh, we're excited to have him. Obviously the guy has a bunch of playmaking ability that you guys saw in the preseason and during that opening punt return. So uh, we'll continue to work through um, whatever Kyle ends up, uh, you know, can take, and we'll see what's going on with it. But I think Kyle uh, wants to be out there, you know, even after he dropped that other one, he was like, put me back out there. I want to be the guy, uh, which obviously we love to hear. Why are you coming out of the game describing that scenario that they don't have down going into the game about the spin and the... Oh, I mean, that's obviously something that we've taught them early on, but we just need to continue to reiterate it. Um, you know, that, hey, if the guy ends up turning the ball over, if he ends up hitting the ball deep, uh, that that spin's just going to be a little bit different, whether it's a right-footed or left-footed punter. Uh, but, yeah, that's something that we always go through them with during the training camp and off-season, and we'll just continue to reiterate it with them because the one that Amani ended up dropping, the guy ended up turning the ball over, and it drifted to his left. So um, that's always something we'll focus on and uh, hopefully get better at. Why are they not getting it? Does it say something about your your messaging? Uh, you know, I don't I don't think so. I just think it was one of those moments where those guys want to go out there and catch the ball and help the team. They probably want to get a return on it, um, and just taking their eye off the ball a little bit uh, obviously doesn't end up helping. What about your kick, a kick return? I know it was a I think a point. It was maybe it was Cannon Hilliard Chestnut as the top three. Now Cannon's out. Hilliard. Maybe iffy, how you looking as far as depth chart goes there? Yeah, obviously Hassan ended up going back there for us uh, during this last game. We thought he did a really good job, um, you know, go, coming up and catching those short kicks uh, and then just running and getting upfield. Um, so we were, we were excited about Hassan. Obviously, Ju uh, Julius uh, will be back there a little bit today, too, uh, getting reps, and we'll find out what Dontrell can do uh, a little bit later on in the week. I know there was mention he was back there during camp. Uh, yeah. Is that something that, that you may approach? Sure. Um, you know, Traylon was another guy who came up to us after, um, you know, the unfortunate incidents of, you know, dropping the punt. But he wanted to be back there, and he came to me and said, Coach, put me back there. I want to be the guy. You know, we just went down the list of Amani and then Robert, and then obviously if things weren't going to work out, Traylon would have got a, an opportunity. The great thing about Traylon is, um, you know, he came up to us and said, I want to do it. And you're always looking for a player to do that, like Amani did, like Robert Woods did, said, hey, put me back there, I can do it. So uh, we'll find out what Traylon can end up doing, but uh, he's getting better each and every time he gets out on the field, which is good. Is that the main, like, enthusiasm for being back there, you seem to be awarding a lot of points for sure. it. Uh, what about successfully oh. doing the job? Where does no, there, that come in? Yeah, there's no question. I mean, that's obviously the most important thing for us to get the ball back. And last week when we talked about that here, um, that's the main goal. You know, we can have enthusiasm and say, hey, I want to be back there, but 
we have got to catch the ball. We got to do our part on special teams to give our offense the ball back. That's our number one goal. Uh, and then we'll fight for yardage and get that. But it's obviously we've got to catch the ball, give the back ball back to the offense. That's got to be the number one goal. The enthusiasm part is just uh, helps us, you know, say, hey, okay, well, he wants to be back there, but can he end up doing it? Are you back to square one? In Kyle's case, this turns into sort of the yips too, and you just have to. You know, you have to work on him just catching the ball above all else. Sure, I think it's, you know, going to be confidence with him going back there. Uh, you know, we'll continue to work with him. He does a great job in practice. Uh, it's just him going into the game now um, of having that confidence of going and catching the ball, whether there's guys around him or not. Um, whether he has to signal for fair catch or get a return. But uh, we'll continue to work with Kyle. Hopefully he continues to have confidence going back there, and, and we'll find out what we're going to do this week later on. Are you back to the point where you were a year or two ago where it's just catch the ball and don't worry about a return? No, we, we don't want that. Um, you know, the biggest thing – catching the ball and giving back to the offense, but we don't want to just be, go back there and fair catch the ball every single time. Like, that's not what we're looking for. If guys are 20, 30 yards down the field and we're calling for a fair catch, we're obviously not helping out our offense at all of gaining field position. Um, but we want our guys to go back there, make smart decisions. If there is a chance to call for a fair catch, let's call for a fair catch. If there's a chance to return some and get some positive yards, we still need to do that. Uh, I mean, obviously, when we lose, we always feel like we're a part of it. Um, you know, we're going to win as a team and lose as a team. Uh, we obviously don't want to have bad, critical mistakes that help our team lose. We want to be more impactful to help our team win. So uh, we'll continue to discuss it and uh, hopefully get better and make an impact positively on a win for us. Has been what you expected so yeah. far in terms of his ability to change field position? Sure. Uh, he's doing a great job for us. Uh, if you guys were at the game against Buffalo, the wind gusts got up to 30 miles an hour during pregame. And uh, it was pretty interesting. Uh, but he you know, stayed compact, was really smooth, hit some really good balls for us. And uh, we were obviously excited to go down there. And you know, to net close to 46, 47 yards, we were, we were excited for him. He's doing a great job. Todd, you guys have uh, struggled with uh, we, we've talked about it a little bit, but the, those sustaining drives after you guys go off script, it's been something that has kind of uh, been a struggle for your offense early on. What do you attribute that to in terms of why things are so successful early on and then you guys can't seem to finish drives later in the game? Yeah, first I would say a little bit of a misnomer with the, with the script uh, term. You know, you set an opening script or what we call the opening script, and it's just a group of plays that we like early in the game. We get together as a staff. It's the same process we've done for years around here. Um, and inevitably, you're going to come off of that script because of a situation. And whether it was the Giants game getting in the red zone quickly or a third down early in the game, you come off of that script uh, within the process of the game. But I would say why we haven't been able to sustain is because our consistency hasn't been there. You know, Our execution, as we've gotten into our second, third drives or into the – you know, second half of the Giants game, uh, you know, we just need to be more consistent in executing our bread and butter schemes. The toss sweep uh, that you guys ran several times to the left, it got stopped for lost yardage multiple times without Taylor on the field. Why why keep going to that when it when they were sniffing it out? Yeah, the, the ball exchange was the same in that it was a toss, but there were two different schemes, one of them being in sub and then the other one being in a, a big personnel grouping thought we could get the front set in a way that we could gain leverage on those blocks. Uh, obviously, it didn't work out. and We didn't execute well enough. But uh, after, the, after the second one, stayed away from that a, a little bit. So. What's the primary thing you need to be doing offensive line-wise right now to kind of reset to the identity that you need to have to, to be the team that you've been? Yeah, I think the communication, number one, across the board, just making sure everybody's um, you know, working to the right guys and, and understanding what we're trying to accomplish. And then number two, we got to win the line of scrimmage. We have to fire off the ball, and, and we, we got to win that line of scrimmage, get into these combinations, uh, and let Derek get into his fourth or fifth step and, and see where we go from there. Derek Carr, and have you have you kept up with him over the years? Yeah, Derek and I have a, a great relationship. He's he's a wonderful human being, as I know you guys have seen, um, you know, throughout the years. Um, and Derek is one of those guys that 
you know, is a perfectionist, a pleaser. He wants to try to improve, you know, at every turn. Uh, and so it was really fun coaching him, you know, in, in a manner of which he always wanted more. He always wanted the, the next thing. He always wanted the next drill. He always wanted the next cut up and, and all those things. Um, so as, as a player, you know, a very dedicated player, as a man, an even more impressive human being and, uh, you know, somebody that, that I uh, consider a close friend. Do you feel you've grown since your last opportunity in, in Oakland uh, as an OC? Yeah, a uh, couple things. One, I, I hope I'm more collaborative. I know that my first time in Oakland, uh, there were times I kind of just shut the door and put my head down and tried to figure it all out. Uh, and so I hope I'm a little bit more collaborative that way. Um, secondly, you know, I, I think I try to anticipate some problems uh, a little bit better. Uh, maybe instead of just banking on, you know, what we do, uh, you know, win in every situation, you know, trying to anticipate some things. And, and then I, I think any time you're doing something for the second time, the second go around, you gain experience, right? You're able to maybe uh, anticipate some in-game things, uh, you know, deal with some relationships maybe different than you did the first time around. Uh, and so, you know, hopefully I'm, I'm better. What are the problems that the offensive line has had and now injuries come into that group as well? Do you have to kind of adjust what you do, maybe keep more, more backs in the block, more tight ends in the block, just to try and help everybody out? Yeah, I think that's a, a constant evaluation. You know, some of the most highly played and highly skilled players on defense – uh, you know, are those edge rushers. And, uh, you know, whether you got a, a full complement of guys or whoever you got out there on the offensive line, those are some tough matchups sometimes. And so we're always looking for ways to make sure that we're doing what's best in protection, uh, trying to give Ryan a chance to get through progressions and find that balance between, you know, always having a bunch of people in blocking and only three out on the route. And then, you know, times where we got to be able to get four, maybe even five out into the route to take advantage of spacing or matchups. So uh, that's a constant evaluation for sure. How did it change your groove after stepping in for Taylor? You know, on, on a uh, kind of short preparation, uh, I thought he did a great job. I'm really excited to uh, see what he does with a full week of preparation. But he, he played hard. You know, obviously, like any of us, obviously myself included, there are things you wish you could have done different in the game or, or uh, handled different, but I think he'll learn from those things. And with a week of prep, I'm excited to see how he plays. Uh, before games, we always see you kind of walk in the, the lining of the field yep. and headphones on usually. What, have you always done that? And what's, what's, what's that about in terms of your own preparation? Yeah, uh, everybody's got their own way of getting ready for games. Some guys go out there and work out and all that. I take prayer walks. You probably see me do it around the practice field here. Um, you know, obviously my faith is something that's important to me. And so I spend some time just in reflection, listen to some worship music, you know, say a little prayer, protection over the players and my staff and, and uh, the guys I'm working with and, and all that. So, How far back that oh, I mean, way before here or being a coordinator, that was something I, I started when I first got into the league and started kind of maturing in my faith. Um, you know, it's something that kind of helped me get focused and centered for game day. Feel confidence is an issue for for some guys on the offense right now, based on the production that you haven't had and the results. I, I don't know that I'd say confidence. I think there's a level of frustration. You know, I, I think any time that you're working as hard as we're working and not seeing uh, the results come to fruition, uh, there's a little bit of frustration, maybe impatience. Um, but we're working hard together to 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 band together uh, to make sure that you know we're. Uh, focused on helping each other out and uh, find a way to break through. And I believe that the process will work and that we will, uh, you know, start to see some of the rewards to our hard work. Coming off of you have to fight your own impatience a little bit too when it comes to that? Uh, I, I don't know that I get impatient. Obviously, I, I want what's best for our players. Uh, and, I, you know, I work tirelessly to try to put them in the best positions we can. Uh, and so... I'm, I, I have an urgency to try to get our players uh, going a little bit because I think they deserve that. I, I see how hard they work. Um, but I, I wouldn't consider myself impatient, more just urgent. Coming off a game where you only scored seven points, like how do you approach this next game? I'm sure you want to come out and, and get points early and sustain that, but what's the approach for you as a play call? Yeah, I, I, can't, uh, I can't chase big plays and try to manufacture some, you know, 40 point play out there they don't exist right so uh, we have to stay true to the process but we have to put an emphasis on scoring points and it's hard in this league to sustain long drives without 
you know, producing some big plays within those drives and certainly without conversions on third down. So we're going to have to find a way, uh, you know, to, to put some chunks together and to convert some third downs. And uh, our mantra's got to be, hey, we got to go score some points. Josh Gordon settled in a little bit more on the practice field. I know he played 18 snaps Monday, but you'll see him building up for potentially more? I think so. And, and you know, understanding maybe different positions so we don't have to just tag him at one spot and, and limit his route tree a little bit. I think he's getting some more exposure, uh, you know, and, and getting in better shape and all those things. So uh, excited to have Josh and, you know, like what he's he's been uh, showing us. We see, like, different personnel packages where it's like, you'll go – like big and pass out of that that package and opposite. Does it get to a point where you just like, you know what, let's just strip it down a little bit, stick with the basics and try to figure out what it is that we do really well? Uh, yeah, you know, I think that we've ex executed some bread and butter schemes uh, out of different personnel groupings. That's something that we said all the way back in camp, right, is we got to be able to run the same plays out of different groupings. Um, you know, there was an empty play in the game. We just missed trailing on a, on a shallow cross. That was out of a big grouping. Uh, again, back to some of our conversations uh, at this podium from last week, you know, you build certain tendencies in that personnel grouping. We had a very heavy run tendency, so we wanted to open them up and get a shallow cross. We just didn't execute. But you're always going to try to find wrinkles like that, you know, and, and, uh, and tendencies like that to try to take advantage of, and hopefully we can go execute and produce. Given his ability to make plays after the catch and, and run with the ball in his hands, do you need to – make Traylon more a focal part of the offense in terms of what he can do? I think he's been growing each and every week. And I think, uh, you know, he's been generating confidence in a lot of people around here each and every week. And so as that happens just naturally, I think it, the ball tends to find him a little bit more. Uh, again, I don't think you can force anything, but you certainly want to give a guy that has uh, done well with his opportunities some more opportunities. Jeffrey was talking about uh... – Seemed like he was pretty excited about a different rush approach against Derek, who he said is more willing to take a hit and you don't have to worry about pinning him in so much. You can kind of just go at him. Yeah, know? I mean, each week you got to evaluate the quarterbacks and their skill sets. Um, we knew with Allen it was going to be, if there was a lane, he was going to probably find it on us. Um, and Derek's got the same mobility. He does. He's, I mean, he can. he's got the athleticism. He can do it. I think he's just – comfortable in the pocket to sit and let things develop a little bit more um, and not quite as quick to take off. But I mean, if we if we give him opportunities to like he's going to, we just got to be disciplined in what we're doing. Um, but it is a little bit diff different mindset. Between Adams, Waller, Renfro, you under siege sort of at every level of the secondary every time they drop back in this game? Yeah, I mean, they got a lot of playmakers back there. Um, we're going to have to do a good job understanding what the scheme is and changing things up on them. Um, we'll see, kind of see where it goes as the game's going, what, what they're doing to, with each guy. You know, that's a big part of it. Um, their game plan coming in, whether it's with Adams or Renfro or Waller. Um, we got to be good adjusting and kind of seeing what that is as the game goes. But yeah, we got, we got our hands full. You know, they got playmakers and they got a guy that can get it to them, you know. So we just got to make sure we're locked in and understand where those guys are at and what they're trying to do with them. Kevin Byard said that at times he has to remind himself to do his job first, not to try and help other guys who maybe are younger that don't understand the scheme and the system as well as he does. How much do your veteran guys have to guard against trying – getting out of their own gap and making a mistake as they're trying to help a younger guy. Yeah, I think a lot of it is more probably pre-snap, the communication aspect of it more so than anything that Kevin's referring to. Um, and we've talked about before, the more guys are familiar with the system, what we're doing, what they're doing, the less that communication plays a role as much pre-snap, right? And it takes a lot out of you. Like, it takes a lot out of you having to communicate, get all these guys lined up, make sure we're in the, in the right call, make sure these guys understand what's going on, what the offense is showing us that we might have a tendency on. So trying to limit that package, and ultimately, those guys have a job to do where they do have to communicate, but some of the other guys got to take some burden on as well with that because um, ultimately, you got to control it. You can control and then be ready to go. Mike explained yesterday why why you don't. I'm, I'm wondering if when you're ever fully healthy in the secondary, you ever consider putting a corner strictly on a top receiver, on a, on a Diggs or an Adams. Yeah. You talked when you drafted Caleb about you know him being a cat coverage guy, like you cover that yep. cat. But you, you haven't really 
done that. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a, a time and place for it. A lot of that depends on what you're doing schematically. There's a lot of ways to try to, whether it's a matchup, if you put one guy on one guy, um, if there's ways where you're pushing help that way to alleviate it, do you really want your best guy on their best guy if you know he's getting a piece that we're trying to help him with, um, where some of those other guys might be vulnerable? So there's a lot of things schematically that we can do to try to help help whoever that is that isn't just solely one-on-one, -on -one, hey, you got him, right? Um, and a lot of that falls on us, just what we're trying to get accomplished with who we got, with who they got. Um, and there is some moving parts. Like, I mean, obviously, if you're traveling with a guy every down, they're going to know you're a man every single play, right? Where if you're in zone or man and you play those zone alignments, now they're not real sure. You can disguise some things. So, I mean, there's give and take to both of it. Um, but if the time comes and we feel like that we got that matchup one on one with whoever it is, then I think we're we're definitely open to it. Is there also an advantage to guys getting used to playing sides, not to the degree of a, of a offensive tackle, but yeah, know, I mean, I, again, I think it's hard, Paul, because like they could just as well put both all the receivers on one side and the corners got to go over. You know what I'm saying? So like these guys are lining up. And offenses do that to you. They, they manipulate formations to try to see what you're in, man, zone, whatever it might be. And then all of a sudden, I, we're working everybody on the left, and now all of a sudden he's got to go all right and play, and it's like we're caught with our pants down, right? So, I mean, there's a lot of things that kind of go into, into those conversations schematically. What are you seeing that's happening on some of these explosives that you guys – I think it's, what, three – yeah. Six, uh, three, 40 yards or more plays that, you know, have been given up. Yeah, I think uh, the couple from the other night, um, dude just got by Caleb, got behind Caleb, should have got behind Caleb. Um, we had one bust in a, in a zone where we should have been deeper with our middle piece. Um, and then the last one, the touchdown to Diggs, we should have been on top of that all day. Uh, he did a little double move, broke out, the corner got nosy, and then he bursted on him, and we got to be on top of that. Is that one where you want that safety back there to? Because I, I think that was on the, the digs touchdown. On the, yeah, on the on the digs. Yeah, we were in a we were in unique coverage where the corner pieces were really the the on top pieces in that in that zone. Okay. Shane, uh, when a team has success, Adams was limited to no catches in the second half last week. When an opponent has success against a guy like that, can you maybe take something from that, or is there a risk of you know they're going to be trying to adapt to get him the ball and? You, can you overthink it in a situation like that? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I think they're probably uh, trying to find answers to to solve that riddle, right? To create ways to get him the ball where they don't get handcuffed a little bit, where they got to go away from him. Um, but yeah, we we use the information we see on film, what other teams are doing, and a lot of that depends on our personnel, our scheme too, and how we can correlate it, how we how it relates to what we've done, right? Where it's not totally brand new, but. Um, there are things you take away from other teams that they've done to try to slow, slow certain guys down. I think you had four sacks in the first half of the season, and since then the pass rush maybe not so effective. I know you're a little banged up at that spot, but how big a concern is that at this point? Yeah, I mean, not. I mean, it is what it is right now. I think our guys are working to try to rush. I, Paul kind of asked the question earlier. I think a little bit of last week was understanding who Josh Allen was. That plays a part in it. Um, but I'm excited for the guys we got in there. They got to go out there and they got to perform and execute and step up and take advantage of their opportunity. So, I mean, I'm not concerned with it. I'm, I'm more hopeful that these guys continue to get better and improve and hopefully step in and are able to make some impact on, on the quarterback. Jeff says, one of the things you preach all the time is about us, it's about us. Okay, what are the main things you're preaching that need to be better for – for your group to play like you want it. Yeah, I think uh, like we had this conversation as a unit earlier in the week, and it comes back to, first of all, our mentality, our approach week in and week out, making sure we control what we can control. Like offenses, are, we're going to obviously have to game plan and be familiar with our opponent. But if we don't go out there and communicate our defense, if we don't go out there and play with physicality, play with effort, play with our standard, um, execute whatever we're doing, Right, like regardless of what the offense doing, it ain't gonna be very good for us, right? So just making sure we're locked in on kind of what what we're doing, our expectation, the standard that we're trying to set and trying to get to here defensively. It's more about our culture than what we're trying to defend.